Well, famous. It's, um, it's an interesting one, this, because I noticed uh, on the Great War Forum, somebody had written recently, um, did he get the, did, did uh, Richard Bannerman get the idea for famous from the forum? Because they're always talking about famous people. And I thought, well, I could reply. I didn't actually in the end. But it wasn't that I got the idea from them, but I knew I'd better get on and write it, because if I didn't, somebody else would, because they kept discussing it. So what it is, it's essentially, I, it, it, it's looking at people who went on to become famous, who, who are not known for serving in the Great War, uh, were famous in the Great War, but were famous afterwards. So we're looking at you know people who went on to become great sculptors like, like Henry Moore, actors like Arnold Ridley, who played Godfrey out of Dad's Army, Basil Rathbone, you know, uh, C.S. Lewis, A.A. A. Milne, all these famous people who were total unknowns, could easily have been killed in the First World War, but then went on to, to, to great fame. And it's really not looking at their, their, their post-war life, but saying, OK, what did A.A. A. Milne do on the song? You know, how did Basil Rathbone win his military cross? So I look at usually one particular incident that, that, incident that, 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 is, that I can follow and, and really build upon. Um, and then I also explore what happened in the, in the rest of their war. But there's usually one really major incident that if people want to go and walk the battlefield or go and see where this happened, they can. And often it's in a very small area. So if you want to go and see where Arnold Ridley was very badly wounded, um, well, that's near the, 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 the village of uh, Fleurs. Well, it's very close to where Harold Macmillan went over the top. I mean, that's at, at Ginchy. It's very, very close. So you can, you can actually walk... You can see where Harold Macmillan was. Literally, there's a point you can go, Harold Macmillan was over there and Arnold Ridley was over there. Not on the same day, but yeah. within, within a couple of weeks of each other. So it just gives people an opportunity to go and walk the battlefield, have a look at where these people served. And um, uh, so that was really the main motivation for writing it. It was, it was really, as I say, if I didn't do it, somebody else would, so I'm going to get in first. <laughs> I'll pick on Arnold Ridley really because um, his is an absolutely fascinating story. He is a, he is a really interesting man. Um, he comes across as this sort of teddy bear on, on Dad's army, yeah. you know, the man who's always nipping off to the toilet, is always getting sprouts for his sister Dolly and things. But in the First World War, he was um, he he was really went through the mill. He was he had his uh, head cracked open by a, a German rifle. He was bayoneted in the groin. I mean, he was going to be bayoneted in the stomach and managed to divert it into his groin. Um, he had a bayonet go straight across his palm and, and ripped open his, his, his arm. And his description of what it was like to fight on the Somme was uh, really, really intense. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I didn't even know he left any memoirs at all. But luckily, he'd done a tape for, for someone and I've utilised that. Plus, he... He wrote some uh, stories which, which remain unpublished, which I, um, thanks to his son, I was able to get access to. Um, so his his service on the on the on the Somme, the fact that he, was, he went over at Delville Wood, he was wounded three times. He is a monumentally interesting man, um, and uh, and also I'll go to talk on a little bit more about what he did later on. So um, he served in the Second World War, and his experiences there, he he was really freaked out about going back to France again. Um, and interestingly, he was serving with, um, in, in the intelligence services, he was serving with Kim Philby, who later went on to obviously create him for me as a spy, <laughs> with Richard Dimbleby. Um, so there's a much more to, uh, to Arnold than, than meets the eye. But uh, really, he's, 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 a, he's a great one to follow, really, really great story. If you want to know about these people that you've grown up with, as I say, Arnold Ridley, A. A. Milne, you know, everyone's read Winnie the Pooh, C. S. Lewis, you know, if you want you know, the Tales of Narnia and things like that, that you know, these people that you've you've known all your lives, these people that you've watched on TV, like like Basil Rathbone and, and his sidekick um, Nigel Bruce, who played his um, his Watson to to Rathbone yeah. Sherlock Holmes, he was in the war as well. So if you want to just follow these people, to actually, you know, these heroes. Um, to see what happened to them, well, that's why you'd buy this book because there's nothing else like it. Um, uh, it's 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 a one-off. Um, I mean, there are lots of other characters you could write about, but my my aim was to write about people that most people would have uh, have heard of. So we discounted some who I thought well, they're borderline whether they're famous now anymore. So we've really gone for this and. Um, and myself and my co-author Victor Peok, you know, we we worked very hard to to make this a, a great read.